Giving up is the birth of regret. The reality of life is that we will all hear more no's than we hear yeses. In the summer of 2009, I was 19 years old, working a summer position at Target between my freshman and sophomore year at undergraduate school. I was working in the women's clothing department and I noticed a lady staring at me from across the aisle. I figured she probably had a few screws loose, so I attempted to ignore her very intense stares. She eventually manages to make her way a little bit closer and closer to me where I was working until she eventually walks up to me and says hello. I say the famous target quote, which is, hi, may I help you find something? She then asks me, were you born in this country? And I was immediately offended. And I said, yeah, I was born in this country. And then she says, do you have any kids? I said, no, I don't have any kids. She then asked me if I was married. And then I said, no, ma'am, I am not married. She says, how old are you? I said, 19, may I help you find something? <laughs> she then says, you are the most beautiful girl I have seen. And I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't work that much for my makeup, but I did the best I could, but thank you. <laughs> and then she says, I think you could be the next Miss USA. And I stare at her in pure disgust and said, pageants? You're telling me pageants, like Sandra Bullock, Miss Congeniality, pageants? You think I should compete in pageants? I'm in the army, okay? We don't do pageants in the army. <laughs> she then asked me to meet her at Starbucks the very next day before my next shift at Target and she just wanted to do a little bit of explaining when it comes to what pageants is. And apparently I was a pretty open-minded 19-year-old because I actually agreed to meet her the very next day. The next day she brought this foot-tall stack of pageant books and proceeds to convince me to enter into a state pageant three months later. For those who do not know, when it comes to Miss USA, you have to win your state first, okay? So three months later, I compete in my first pageant, and I lose. I go back the second year, compete in the state pageant, I lose. Go back the third year, compete in the state pageant, and lose. Go back the fourth year, compete in the same pageant, and lose. I go back the fifth year, y'all, compete in the state pageant and lose. But guess what? I go back the sixth year, guess what happens? I lose. <laughs> I called her on the phone and said, you told me I could be the next Miss USA. And she says, Deshauna, keep working, keep working. Don't quit, keep going back. And in June of 2015, she passes away from leukemia. Six months later, in December 2015, I win Miss District of Columbia, USA. And six months after that, in June of 2016, I become the first soldier to win Miss USA. Giving up is the birth of regret. Giving up is something I did a lot of growing up, and I don't think I really challenged myself to stick anything through until I joined the track team in middle school. I remember having to ask my mom after tryouts and making it to the team for my very first pair of track shoes. Now at the time, she walks into our house and she has a bag that has a nice Nike check sign on it. So I get excited because I wasn't getting new shoes very often. I go to take the shoe box out the bag and I notice that it says a size nine on it. Mind you, in the seventh grade, I was a size five. I open the box and I slide my feet into the shoe and I look at my mother and I said, these shoes are too big. She says, I know I did that on purpose. I was like, why would you buy shoes that are too big on purpose, mom? And she says, because I know that you're going to grow into them. <sighs> Coach has us line up on the starting line and he wants us to run a lap around the track. As we go to take off, I immediately fall to the ground, twist my ankle because the shoes are entirely too big. See, I couldn't run at the speed that I wanted to because I didn't fit the shoes I was wearing at the time. 
Now, many of us have goals we're trying to achieve, but the person we are right now, is not the person that we need to be when we cross the finish line to our dreams. So we must walk and pace ourselves on this journey to our goals because we haven't grown enough in ourselves to fit the shoes that we need to achieve our aspirations. At times, our purpose drops in our laps as if the heavens threw it by accident. I ask only one thing of you all today after you leave this building. Do not fear failure, but please be terrified of regret. As giving up is the birth of regret. After you walk out this door, you will receive a hundred doors shut, slam in your face. You will have a hundred moments that will be filled with someone telling you no, or telling you, thank you for your application, but we regret to inform you that we've chosen a different candidate for this job. You will sit in a hundred different interviews and you will not get the job. The reality of life is that we will all hear more no's than we hear yeses. And we will fail a lot, and I mean a whole lot. But what I ask of you today is to not take no for an answer. Don't be afraid of no's. Be afraid of the possibility of a yes that you have prematurely destroyed because you decided to quit before the clock strikes 12. You can ask anyone, friend, family, anybody. I love a good no. Please tell me no. Telling me no is like adding fuel to a fire that is now set ablaze because of your single no. I love additional reasons to work harder. Please give me a reason. So today I challenge you to fight, to work, to not stop here, to believe so heavily in your aspirations that you too will not fear the word no, but instead you will choose to welcome it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.